and we'll get this started. All right, guys, I wanted to welcome you to our team call. Super excited, as usual, to see all of you here. I wanted to start with some recognition so that we can recognize the amazing accomplishments that everyone is doing. So I'm going to start with Success Club, and I'm going to start with the people who have two points on the board. And if I butcher your name, I'm sorry, because there's some new names on here that I don't recognize, which is a good thing, because that means you're brand new and you're doing things. So we've got Katie Petrillo, Courtney Wass, Brittany Chinoski, Lauren Chenard, Carolyn Rossitano, Danielle Lang, Shannon Olson, Chelsea Treachler, Amanda Cullen, Becca Ramos, Caroline O'Neill, Judy Ann Ridley, Amanda Bogiano, Rebecca Rodriguez, Lauren Avon, Ann Kalausi, Cody Clark, Ari, Ar I'm saying your name wrong. I, mean, I think I overthink it. Ariah Billings, Amanda Wyckoff, Alicia Condal, and Megan Meyer, all with two points. So you literally just have to help two more people and you've reached your goal, which is totally doable. Um, we also have Katie Lover and Nicole Rodriguez with four. So you guys each have to help one more person to reach your goal and you can totally do that. And then with eight points, we have Brittany Swanson and Christy Kako. And then with 12 points, we have Diana Francis and Emmy Schneider Green. So Emmy and Diana are coaches of the week and I have myself with success cup 20, but I don't like to, um, say that I'm the coach of the week because it's not cool. Um, okay, so now we have our top recruiters. Uh, I want to start with everyone who has brought on one more coach to our family. So far, we've got Rebecca Rodriguez, Nicole Rodriguez, Ann Klausi, Megan Meyer, Lauren Avon, Katie Petrillo, Katie Lover, Daniel Lang, Courtney Wass, Cody Clark, Caroline O'Neill, Brittany Chinoski, Brittany Swanson, Brandy Erickson, Araya Billings, Amanda Wyckoff, and Amanda Cullen all have brought one coach to our, our team this uh, month. We have myself with three new coaches, and then we have Christy Kako and Emmy Schneider-Green with five new coaches. And then our top recruiter of the month so far, we have Diana Francis with six new coaches. And I want to welcome our new coaches. So welcome to the team, Yolanda Cullen, Rebecca Trahan, Tyler Binyard, Jane Jensen, Nikki Maloney, Michael Chinoski, Laura O'Neill, Jolie Miguel, Katie Petrillo, Carissa Comley, Sarah Jennings, Faith Orsetti, Michelle Reddy, uh, Desiree Judd, Heather Neff, Alexia Smith, Wendy Lewis, Sarah Foyle, Zach Wright, Stephanie Wright, Lint Kin Kinsey, Libby, Amanda Mal Malave, or Malave, sorry, <laughs> Virginia Davis, Luke Dowd, Caroline Kimsey, Jennifer Hansen, Jenny. Sweet, Krista Brown, Ashley Sapita, Barbara Gensel, Melissa Brownfield, Cherish Fersinato, um, Nicole Lorimer, Eamon Basil, um, Amy Consavoy, and Henry Cummings. So welcome all of you to our team. I'm super excited to have so many new people on our team, and I'm super sorry if I butchered your name. Like I said, it's not my strong, my strong suit. And I was a teacher, so that's kind of embarrassing. Um, okay, so I wanted to get started and welcome our guest speaker to the call. I actually had a chance to um, speak on her call on Monday, and now she's on our call. So we did a little flip-flop. Um, we met in a five-star and above group. It was, may, may have been the wall or the wall behind the wall or the wall behind the wall behind the wall. There's like so many different ones. I get them all confused. Um, but we met in a five star and above group and we were talking about uh, swapping calls and Abby is going to be talking to us tonight about challenge groups and shakeology or attention, correct? Yeah. Okay. So that's something that we all, um, could benefit from. I know that we, a lot of us have, uh, switched up our challenge groups lately. So, or a lot of us have felt our challenge groups are pretty dang stale. So I feel like this is a great topic for the time being. And also, Shakeology or attention is king. So if that's something that you're struggling with, by the end of this call, you should have no problem with that at all. Um, so Abby is a success starter, which means she hit Success Club her first three months as a coach. She's a five-star diamond coach, 2015 elite. She's a Success Club legend. For 40 months in a row, she has hit Success Club, which is amazing. She's also a team leader, a retired dental hygienist. I don't know if we have any dental hygienists on our team, but that's pretty awesome. 
She has her master's in nutrition and she is also a gym owner. And she is a, the wife to an awesome husband and a seven-year-old and a four-year-old princess, Hatson. <laughs> uh, not a seven-year-old. They've been married for seven years, sorry. And she has a four-year-old, um, Addison. So without further ado, I'm going to let you take it away and talk to us about how to keep people on Shaco and have awesome challenge groups. So whenever you're ready. <laughs> All right. Hey, guys. I hope that um, I don't sound ridiculous to you right now. I have a cold and I just taught P90X Live, so I busted the rest of the voice that I had left. But hopefully, you guys can hear me and understand me, and I apologize in advance if I have to cough. But I can't help but drink my awesome Shakeology right now, which is not helping my throat coughing issue, but it tastes awesome. Um, one tip for you before I even get started for Shakeology retention is if y'all aren't making your Shako look pretty, that's your first step to shake out retention because, you know, people don't think shakes taste good, but whenever, like, we'll see if you can even see this. It's not as cute now that I drank half of it, but, like, I drizzled the inside of my cup with peanut butter, all right? I just made that look beautiful, and I always drink my Shakeology out of a wine glass or a martini glass or a mug or something different so that people aren't seeing shaker cups all the time on the internet, so... There's one free tip before I get started, but um, tonight I'm going to talk to you about something that I'm super passionate about, but before I do that, I want to tell you a little bit about me because I think, I know I learn best from people I can connect with on some level, and I know that even if everybody here is 15 years older than me or doesn't have kids or is still working a full-time job, whatever it is in your life that you're like, she's not anything like me. There's going to be something that we share in common, some part of my story I hope that you can connect with and um, benefit from in what I share with you tonight. So like Carolyn said, my name's Abby. One funny thing is that um, I guess Carolyn and I have more in common than I realized that we both butcher names very easily. And when I was actually um, messaging her, I said to her in a message, I was like, hey, is your last name like Roan, like drone or Roan E like pepperoni because I don't want to say it wrong with my team call. So I totally get that. And I hope everybody here, if your name ever gets said wrong, you laugh it off. Cause I think one of the funniest things in the world and the most beautiful thing of this business is we meet people that we've never met. Like I've never actually had a conversation on the phone or by voice or seen so many people on our team and then we get to meet each other through like a beautiful relationship of social media and the internet. And then like, it's like the warmest embrace ever when you see each other at a live event, right? And you're like, oh my gosh, it's like we've known each other forever, but actually I've never said your name out loud before. So I love coaching for so many reasons, but here's some stuff about me. So I joined as a coach in July of 2013. My daughter was seven months old. And I could not have imagined putting one more thing on my plate at that point in time. So um, to give you a little backstory, like she said, I have my master's in nutrition. I own a gym. And I thought beach body coaches were for the birds. I was like, I'm actually working out and helping people. I have a degree in nutrition and a gym. That's where people get fit in the gym. People don't get fit at home. That stuff doesn't work. Just eat real food don't drink shakes, don't take pills. You know, this was like my whole mentality. So anybody who knew me, uh, number one, was pretty shocked when I ever became a coach, but I found out I had it all wrong. I was the one that had it all wrong, and I am so glad I was the one that was wrong because this opportunity has changed my life in so many ways. So how did this come into my lap? Well, I'm one of those people. How many of you here are Emerald or Above coaches and you receive leads from hitting Success Club. Anybody here? Well, if you have not done that yet, one major goal in your business is you should become at least an Emerald coach, be hitting Success Club consistently, and Beachbody gives you free leads. One other super cool thing is when you hit the rank of Diamond and you're hitting Success Club, Beachbody might even assign you a coach one day. And that was me. Abby Walsh signed up on Beachbody.com to become a coach without knowing any Beachbody coaches, and um, it was random. So how this happened was everybody at my gym had been asking me, hey, Abby, what about 
you fill in the blank, okay, because I can't talk about other products on a recorded call, but they were asking me about all these different shakes that were out there, all these different diet pills, all these different protein bars, all this stuff, and they're like, what about this? I want to take this to lose weight. I want to drink this, and I was like, stop. You can't take any of that stuff. Just eat real food. It's fine. And they kept pestering me about it. What about this? What about that? But these ingredients look clean. Will you please look at these for me? So I started going through all these products for them. And I was like, just wait, don't take any pills. I'm going to research all these products and I'm going to give you my honest opinion. So I started going through all these products and it was so easy to just throw them in the dumpster. I was like, that's awful. I can't believe people are eating that. Like that's full of artificial this, this, and that. That's like an ingredient that should be illegal in the United States. That's illegal in Europe. Why can we drink it here? You know, all these things. It was so easy to be like, don't take any of that crap. And then I got to Shakeology. I'd never heard of Shakeology. And I started researching it a little bit. And face value, I was reading the label. And I didn't have to immediately be like, don't drink that. So I went a little deeper and I started investigating how the ingredients were harvested and where they came from and what all was in it. And I started to think this actually could be a good thing for people to drink, not a bad thing, but I wasn't going to recommend it to anybody until I tried it myself. So I went on beachbody.com and I read the website top to bottom, front and back. And I realized that whatever a coach was, it could get me a discount on this product. So never trying Shakeology before, never doing an at-home fitness program. I signed up to be a Beachbody coach that day to get a discount on the product. My coach called me, and had she not have called me, I would have never known what a Beachbody coach really was or what this opportunity was. And when she first called me and we had a conversation, I said, I'm not going to do anything with that. Like I told you guys in the beginning, I'm a real fitness professional. Like I'm actually helping people get fitness results. You can't work out at home and get results. And then my coach was like, but I've lost 90 pounds. And I was like, doing at home workouts. And she's like, yeah. And so I started to give it just 1% more belief at a time. And my belief built over time. If you would have asked me in the beginning, Abby, will you ever do this full time? I would have said no. If you would have said, Abby, will you ever promote at home workout programs? I would have said no. If you would have asked me, would you ever leave your job that you went to school for to work at home as a beach body coach in network marketing? I would have said no. So if you are somebody right now who's even said that yourself, you've said, I'll never leave my full time job. I love my full time job. Or you said maybe to yourself, that, you know, no matter what, like, I'm not promoting X because I don't believe in it. Or maybe you're somebody who you just don't know still if this is for you. I want to just ask you to give yourself permission to just be open. Be open to what comes at you and realize that your why changes and your belief changes in this company the deeper you get into it. You know, I always explain it a little bit like Success Club. In the beginning, we think like, we see people hitting Success Club 10 and 20, and we're like, I can't even get one point on the board. I could never hit 20. I could never do whatever. But what happens with this business is it becomes addicting the more you do, and the bigger your belief grows, and the more result you see in the lives of other people. And for me, while, uh oh, I froze on my screen. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. You can yeah. still hear me. Yeah. Yeah, we hear you. All right, good. I just won't look at myself. Am I frozen for you guys? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. How awful. Well, <laughs> well, we'll leave my face look like that and hope that it changes in a few minutes. If you can't hear me for whatever reason, Carolyn, shoot me a message or something. Right. But, um, you know, so basically, in a nutshell, I'm a squirrel, so now I have to regain my train of thought. But, you know, all these things I didn't think I could do. And, you know, if you're trying to hit success club and you feel like you can't do it and then you start to change one life and then you're like, wow, it was really awesome to help that one person get a transformation. And then you want to change two lives and then you want to change three lives and then you want to change four lives and it keeps going. And the same thing happens with the coaching opportunity. You know, I never thought I would want to leave my full-time job to do this, but when I started seeing that not only could I be successful, but I could help other people be successful. I could help other people leave part-time jobs that they didn't want to work at or a full-time job that, you know, caused them pain or harm. And I could give them another opportunity that started to become addicting. 
and the ability to help others achieve their goals started to become more important than me achieving my goals. And that is honestly what I believe is the most beautiful thing about this opportunity. So keep an open mind and an open heart that your why may change, that you know everything could change. And maybe in a year or two or three, it's going to be you who's not working the job that you originally started working at. And it's going to be you who is hitting success club 30. So keep an open mind and we will go from there. All right. So with that said, you know, a little bit about me, I want to go into the meat of my topic of challenge groups. But first I have to make sure my screen's going to work for you guys because I've got a screen share. So can you still hear me? Yeah. All right, let's see. Bear with me for a moment while I see if I can make the color wheel of death, as I call it, on my computer yeah. stop spinning and load this for you. If I disappear, just, you know, chatter among yourselves or like I'd tell my fitness classes, jump rope till I get back yeah. and we'll make it work. One second. Hey there, Abby. Can you hear me, Abby? Uh, just hang on. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Let me message her. What have I done? Yep, she's gone. She'll be back. <laughs> Got my notepad ready, so it's okay. <laughs> have we ever had this many people on a call? <laughs> It's weird, too, because it's like I really screwed up with the link, and there's a lot of people on the call. Yeah, this is amazing. I know. There's usually like maybe 15 or 16. We've got a lot of new coaches, too, so I see them on here. Well, this part will be awkward for anyone watching the recording. <laughs> Christy just eating her sandwich. You're like on the big screen right now too. I don't know why. <laughs> it's so funny. I'm back, homies. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, I just decided to shut that ship down. And so I'm back. So hopefully <laughs> you can tell me, did you hear anything I said when I was a frozen zombie or not? Um, yeah. For a little bit of it. And then you're like, I'm going to share my screen. And then you disappeared. Oh, good. Okay. So you heard most of it. You heard the important things. So basically, in a nutshell, when I was frozen, what I wanted you to know is that regardless of what you think you may do with this business, give yourself permission to change that down the road because you don't know where you're going to be in three months or six months or a year or two years. And if you keep an open mind, something huge could happen in your life or maybe in the life of somebody else close to you that you're going to help an amazing leader in this business. Okay. So for me, you know, Carolyn shared some, um, maybe if you can mute everybody again, Carolyn. I'm like a squirrel. So if I hear anything. Awesome. Okay. So whenever Carolyn shared in the beginning, a little bit about me, you know, she shared some accolades and one of them was that in 2015, I was an elite coach and, um, I don't know how many of you know all the qualifications to be elite, but it is a process. It is a big team process of everybody working together for a common goal. And I worked really, really hard towards that goal. And what I personally found at the end of that year was that 
my team was focused on the wrong things. And we were focused on bringing people into the business and bringing people into challenge groups, but we were not focused on getting those people results once they were here. And if I only hit home one point to you guys today, I want you to know this. You can have both. You can achieve great goals and get people amazing results, but it has to start with the results. You have to lead with the results, your own personal results and getting other people results to have a business that's not a house of cards, but a business that is a strong, strong foundation. Okay. So here's the deal for me. I, if I told you one important thing today, I'd want it to be this. There's lots of people out there that sell stuff, right? We, we get sold things every day and there's a lot of direct sales companies out there that sell makeup and you know, Tupperware and all these things. And I love all those things. I buy all those things. I, I try to support as many people as possible. And if I like your face wash, I'm going to buy your face wash. So, you know, I buy things from people all the time and I support them. But when they sell me something, they're like done with me, right? Like when's the last time your pampered chef consultant like checked up on you and how your spatula is doing, right? So they sell you something and they're done. But in our world, when we sell somebody something, our work is just beginning. So we have to remember that is our responsibility and our obligation as a coach to give people what we told them we were going to give them, which is accountability and results. So I'm going to talk to you today about how I changed the way I run my challenge groups from, um, you know, it really started as a transformation back in August where I decided that um, people couldn't change their whole mindset and their lives and start meal planning and prepping in a weekend like I used to give them to get started for a group. And they needed more like a week of like real structure to be able to learn these things. So I started with something as simple as that. And then a light bulb went off in my head when the all access really came out where I said, you know what, people need more than 30 days to have a lifestyle change. They, in 30 days, they're gonna have a healthy month they might lose some weight, but to really have a lifestyle change, we need to go through some ups and downs together. So I started running 90 day groups with 90 day commitments. And that is the meat of what I'm going to share with you today. So I am going to share my screen now and hopefully you don't disappear. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay. All right. I'm going to enter my slideshow. So challenge groups. I want you to run challenge groups that promote both results and revenue for you as a coach. Because one thing that I think we all discount is that you're worth something. You're worth a lot of something. And the biggest value in the challenge pack is truly you and the support that you give people. So you deserve to make money relative to the impact that you're creating in somebody else's life. Okay. So never forget that it is about making money a little bit too. We all can't do this for free. So one thing that um, you know, I kind of started doing with my team was helping them brainstorm how if we can lead with the mindset of a three-month commitment, how this is going to change our income as well as change results for people. So I want you all, if this isn't already a goal of yours, to make it a new goal, that every single month you enroll three new challengers with an all-access challenge pack that accomplishes a few goals for you. Number one, it accomplishes success club five it's also going to help you hit income goals as well and it's going to help you be running challenge groups every month which is what we need to do as coaches we need to bring new people in or else we're not going to be running challenge groups and then we're not going to be actively involved in our fitness and we're not going to get results either so it all starts with one simple goal a goal of helping at least three new people every month start with an all-access challenge pack so this is challenge packs. You're making two hundred and ten dollars a month. Well, in month two, you're also going to bring on three new challengers. So, you're, because this is key, and we're going to talk about this as we go. But whenever I sell somebody a challenge pack, I let them know they're committing to ninety days with me and Shakeology and our group. So they're not going to cancel their Shakeology for at least two more months. All right, and we'll talk about that as we go. But so, in a nutshell. You get 1950 commission on that times three, 5850 plus your three new ones, you have 26850. Then month three, you're gonna have another 210 from your new challengers. And then this time you have six people on auto ship and you're gonna get another $117. So it's $327. And you see how this compounds. What if you hit Success Club 10 every month? What if you bring five new people in to the business every month? 
right? You're going to have at least, no matter what, 15 people on auto ship at all times. And I'm going to talk to you about how really these people never cancel for me. They either become a lifer or a coach. And we're going to talk about the process to get them there. So what's your goal? Every goal, three new challengers, enrolling with the challenge pack. Registration is open for my group. So the way I personally run my group since I started I'm changing over to 90 days, I don't know how many of you have tried to run more than one challenge group in a month, but uh, if you're like me, one group gets a lot of attention, and then the, the second group, the group that you started in hopes to maybe hit your success club goals, kind of gets put on the back burner accidentally. It's just how it works. We can only handle so much mentally at one point in time. So for me, I realized I was going to be more effective, more present coach, and help people get better results if I ran one group. And I got super organized with how I did that. And so my group is 90 days long, and I add new people to that same group every 30 days. So every 30 days, people are moving through a new cycle of the group. They're going to graduate from the group after 90 days, and new people are going to come in. So I only have so many people to deal with at one point in time, and they're all in one spot. So registration is open, and you enroll three people with a challenge pack. So first of all, it starts with you. So, um, you know, this is a gut check moment for everybody, and I don't want you to write it off because this is serious, and I had to have a gut check with myself. Ask yourself these three questions and be completely honest with yourself. Are you practicing what you preach? So what you're telling your challengers to do, are you doing? Are you actually working out every day? Are you following a workout program? Are you measuring your food in the containers? Are you practicing what you preach? Are you telling them to show up with their sweaty selfie on workout Wednesday? And are you doing it too? You know, all the things we're asking them to do, we can't expect anybody to do when we're not doing it ourselves. Number two, are you hiding behind your coach hat? So maybe you're like me. And for a while, I was getting no forward progress in my fitness because I was focused only on helping other people get results. And I wasn't doing it too at all. I wasn't following a program and I was um, totally hiding behind my coach hat. Like I'm the facilitator of this group. I don't have to participate like that. I am participating every day. I'm putting up a daily post, but I wasn't an active challenger in my challenge groups. All right. And then number three is, are you actually providing what you said you would provide? So I can't tell you how many posts I see on Facebook, different coaches promoted posts from like pages and just posts in my newsfeed that are like, you know, sign up for a 30 day challenge. You're going to get 24 seven support from a coach. You're going to get, you know, amazing results. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. I'm not going to let you fall through the cracks. I'm going to make sure you stick to your program. And what are you actually doing to, to match the promises that you made people? You know, are you really offering them 24 seven coaching? I sure hope not. I'm not, you shouldn't. That's going to burn you out really fast, but you know, beyond all of that, what are you doing to actually do what you said you were going to do as a coach, right? So ask yourself those questions and be clear. So now these are my five top tips for you. So if you're a note taker, there are five things here that I'm going to go over with you. And the first one is everything changed in my groups when I started setting clear expectations. Clear expectations start through my initial messages with people. When I'm inviting people, I'm inviting them to a 90-day challenge. I'm setting that expectation right there that they're going to be there for 90 days. When we talk through everything, I let them know they're going to be committing to 90 days of Shakeology and showing up in my group every day online. I'll tell you a quick little sidebar story here. So I used to wonder why people weren't showing up in my challenge groups. I'd be like, what the heck? Like, I'm the only one posting in here. Or like, there's one or two people posting their workouts every day and nobody else is. Why aren't these people doing anything? Why are they so lazy? And then I realized what was happening was I gave them permission to be lazy. And I basically told them like, hey, there's going to be this challenge group and you can check in whenever you want. And like, you can post what you want and like, you don't have to share if you don't want to. And we sugarcoated it so much for people that then they didn't do anything in the group. Or maybe then you'd message them and you'd be like, Hey, I just want to check in on you. And they're like, oh yeah, I'm following along. I'm just not posting. I like to watch though. I like to be in the groups to watch. And that's not helpful to anybody. <coughs> so what I find is that I get the best results in my group 
when everybody has the same level of commitment in the group. And everybody's only gonna have the same level of commitment if I let them know what they're committing to. So not only do I set the stage with those messages, when I'm inviting people to my group, letting them know they're gonna have to show up every day, letting them know that it's 90 days, letting them know that they're committing to 90 days of Shakeology, I also make them sign a contract. And you see a little picture of my contract below there, but basically, in a nutshell, what it says is everything I expect of them and everything that they can expect of me. Now we have an agreement. One of the things it says in there is, I will get back to any of your questions within 24 to 48 hours, okay? Because I don't know how long y'all have been in this business, but I've had some angry people message me before that have told me like, you don't even respond to my messages. And I'm like, it hasn't even been 24 hours. Like, what's going on here? You know, and it's because I set the expectation that they were gonna get 24 seven coaching, right? So know what expectations you're setting for people in advance then have them agree to it. So I have these people sign my contracts and that's one of the first things they have to do in my group is they have to post a picture of the contract that they printed it out, signed it, and hung it up somewhere in their house that they're gonna see it every day. So set clear expectations. Number two, run what I call a prep week. Maybe you call it a preseason, maybe you call it whatever you want, but I used to just do this for a weekend, right? I think it started out as me being a busy person who was working full time, and I guess I didn't tell you all the different hats that I wore in the beginning, but when I started coaching, I had a seven month old, I was a full time grad student getting my master's in nutrition, I was full time working as a dental hygienist, I own a gym and I was teaching about 14 fitness classes a week, I volunteer at my church, and my list just went on and on and on. So I was scattered, I had no time management, and way too many plates spinning. And you know, oftentimes, I feel like sometimes I would open my challenge groups on like Sunday, the day before they were to start. And I'd be wondering why people weren't getting great results. Or maybe if I was really organized, I opened it up the Thursday before because that's what my coaches, 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 coach did. And that's all I ever knew. And I thought, this is how it is. And some people would go after it and get great results. But what I found changed everything for me was when I gave people a whole week to not be overwhelmed, to give them permission to take it slow, and to give them guided direction one day at a time as to what I wanted them to accomplish. So if anybody has questions on this and we have time at the end, I can go through exactly what I go through in my prep week with you. But in a nutshell, basically I'm taking them through setting their goals. I'm taking them through the nutrition plan. I'm taking them through choosing a workout from on demand and deciding when they're gonna do that workout. I'm taking them through meal planning. Then I'm taking them through taking their before pictures and their measurements and their stats and making sure all those things get done, spread out across a week before they ever get started, all right? So number three tip for you, don't let anybody start if they're not prepared. I think the worst thing we can do as a coach is like put somebody out there in our group, let them stay in our group, let them start their program if they didn't take a before picture. Let them start their program if they haven't meal planned. Let them start their program if they've set no goals, right? Because what has happened? They are doomed to fail because we all know that like the perfect equation for failure is poor planning, right? So it's like how many of you have been like, I'm going to eat healthy this week, but I didn't meal plan. And so then pizza happened on Wednesday and then like, I didn't realize it was somebody's birthday on this day and they brought cake and I ate it because I forgot to bring a lunch. And it, you know, goes on and on and on and on and snowballs if we don't have a plan. So why would I expect that my brand new challenger who's maybe never eaten healthy in their life is going to be able to do well without a plan? So what happens when people aren't prepared from my experience, what I've found is that if they've never taken a before picture even or done their weight or their measurements, they're not actually ready to start and they're not committed. So maybe they're gonna do a week of the program, maybe they're gonna do two workouts, it was really hard, they didn't have any skin in the game yet, and they quit before they ever started. They're the person that doesn't show up in your group anymore, they don't answer your messages, all these things happen. And you know what they're gonna tell their friends? The 21 day fix doesn't work. Or those containers didn't work for me. You know, nobody ever says like, I didn't work. They say the containers don't work. The programs don't work. At home fitness didn't work for me. But what really didn't work for them was you. And we have to take extreme ownership of that as a coach and say, you know, 
yeah, you can't work out for them and you can't meal plan for them, but you can hold them accountable to getting started right. And if they're not ready, not getting them started. So for example, we'll go through all this at the end too, very clear and concisely. But for example, if people don't do this thing right here, this picture is what I post the weekend um, before our group actually starts. It's their success checklist. Have you taken your pictures? Have you got rid of anything in your house that is not going to serve your goals? Have you made a meal plan? And if you haven't done your goals and affirmations or any other assignments in our group, do those now. In that post, it also says, if you do not turn these things in by 9 p.m., please message me if there's a reason why or else you're not going to continue on with us in this round. So I'm very strict on that, and it's, it's because it helps people get results. But, um, you know, if that would happen, what I do is I message that person and I say to them, hey, I've been doing this for a long time, and I know it's not going to serve you to get started when you're not ready. Do you think it would be better for you to get started in three weeks with my next group? And most times they're going to be like, yeah, actually, there's just a little bit too much going on right now. And I'm like, awesome. Why don't you start drinking your Shakeology every day? Let's make that one goal that you do for the next three weeks. And then we're going to get started into a challenge group together. Okay. So matching their, you know, effort and their action with a new goal that actually suits them. Losing 10 pounds when you're not going to take a picture, you're not going to make a meal plan. You're not going to decide when you're working out or what workout program you're going to do. Those actions and goals don't align. So as their coach, you're not, you know, ripping them off. You're helping them set a new goal that matches their actions. Okay. Number four, it's more than a healthy month. Like I said in the beginning, when we change our mindset and the way that we frame it and how we talk to people about like, Hey, this isn't a 30 day group or a 21 day group because it's more than a healthy month. Even if you want to do the 21 day fix, we're going to do three rounds together. Or if you want to do the 21 day fix and then do country heat and then do court of force, you can, but we're going to do this thing for 90 days because I need you to have a birthday party that you have to go to. I need you to have somebody brought in donuts at work. I need you to have that, um, you know, your husband surprised you and took you out to eat. I need you to have that you went camping and binged out on s'mores and are totally off track. <clears throat> All those things need to happen. So you learn how to make this a lifestyle and get back on board with me. Okay. So I tell them this in advance. We're going to create a healthy life. And number five is my favorite tip for you. So ditch the fluff and track your participants. So what really changed my group, I'm sorry, I have to cough again. <coughs> what really changed my groups was when I stopped spending my time, when I only had so much time in a day to work my business, I stopped spending my time creating beautiful photos on Canva and PicMonkey and elaborate posts about, you know, healthy eating and tips for my challengers and special challenges for them to do and tallying up their points. And I started actually tracking what they were doing, what they were eating and helping them get better results. <clears throat> so what I do, you'll see a picture of it here. I bought that off Etsy. Some coach made a pretty sheet and I bought it off Etsy. So you can buy it off Etsy too if you like it. But um, it's just a participant tracker. You write their names there and you check off that they participated that day. For me, what does the check mark mean? For me, it's a requirement in my groups that people log their food. They write a food diary, a little food journal, a food log in my group. And that's when I put a check mark by their name every day. Why do I do that? Number one, I'm a little bit of a geek. I did get my master's in nutrition. But I know, just like you all know, that you can do the 21-day fix workouts for 21 days. But if you eat donuts every day, you're not going to look like those pictures that you wanted, right? What really matters at the end of the day is what people eat. 70% of people's results is what they eat. So you don't have to be a nutritionist to know that they said that they were on plan A and they need four red containers and two yellow containers and two purples. <coughs> and you don't need to be a nutritionist to know that a Hershey bar wasn't on the meal plan, right? So you don't have to have a degree like me, but you just look at their food log every day and you're like, okay, they cheated today. So for me, I'll show you what one looks like. For me, I have like a little color code because I'm a handwritten kind of girl. So, you know, if I highlighted it, that's because they got a workout in that day too. And I just wanted to know. I wanted to know if they were doing their workouts or not. 
if I put a star by it, that's when they posted progress pictures. This girl is so interested. If I, <laughs> I'm glad I'm interesting. If I circled somebody's check mark, that means they cheated. All right. And so how I look at this then at the end of the week, when Cindy is like, Hey, I uh, didn't lose any weight and I'm super frustrated. Then I pull out my track. I'm like, Girl, I circled your check mark five times this week, which means you ate food that was off your plan five times this week. In the 21-day fix, we get three swaps, and those swaps are like equivalent to 100 calories or yellow container. So if you want different results, we got to do something different next week. And I have actual tangible something to tell them that didn't take nutrition knowledge. It just took the knowledge you have as a coach of knowing what they're supposed to be doing and what they actually did, okay? So what I do... This is my morning routine every single day. I can talk about that too if we have time, but basically I'm a Miracle Morning fan. I get up in the morning. If you've never read that book, put it on your list. Anybody who's successful that tells you to read a book, you should read the book they tell you to read. And I read The Miracle Morning. It changed my life. I get up in the morning. I pray. I do my devotions. I plan out my day. And then the next thing I do is I spend, honestly, probably an hour in my challenge groups. Maybe you don't have to do that, but I track about 40 people like that every day. Sometimes when I'm running coach groups, I'm tracking up to 100 people a day like that. So I spend a lot of time in my groups. But for me, this is where I get all my coaches. For me, this is where I build the best relationships. For me, this is where I have the most fun because people are losing like 50, 60, 70, 100 pounds. And it's awesome. That's what we're here to do. So that fills up my cup. It's like my cup of joy and my cup of joe in the morning is checking into those groups. Okay. So I check people off. They checked in with their food logs. And the people who didn't show up, I tag them in a post. I post something funny most times. I'm like, I'll find a picture on the internet that says like, I miss your face. And then I'll post that and I'll tag them in it. Um, <clears throat> so I'll do that. Then if they don't show up two days in a row, I send them a private message. If they don't show up three days in a row, I get on the phone and I call them. And I'm going to tell you why right now. Because at the end of the day, if people get off track for like a day, we can save them. If they get off track for like two days, you can save them. If it's been like a week and you didn't even know they weren't there or like they didn't respond to your messages, so you were like, yeah, I'm just not going to worry about it, then it's really hard to get them back on track at that point. They've like thrown in the towel. By this point in time, they might have very easily eaten through all the results they already gained in their progress and they want to quit. Okay. So if we can stay on people, especially the first month that they're in a group with you, like every day, then it's going to change their results. It's going to change their experience. It's going to change their life. Okay. So I'm going to insert real quick here, some retention tips for you. So this is something that I do in the first two weeks of somebody being in my challenge group. Week number one, we just got through our prep week and we're starting. <clears throat> and I send them a voice memo that says, Hey girl, wanted to check in and see if you started drinking your Shaco every day. How are you liking it? How are you mixing it? Something super simple. And the reason why I do this is because, number one, sometimes right off the bat, somebody's like stirring their Shakeology and they're not liking it. And obviously it's because they're stirring their Shakeology in like three ounces of water. And you need to help them out and give them a better recipe and help them know what to do. Even though you posted recipes in your group and they're seeing everybody else's Thin Mint Shako, they're not getting the drift and they hate it. So we can save people from very early on if we get them to do it. Because what happens if a week went by or two weeks or three weeks before you realize that they weren't really drinking their Shakeology? Another bag comes and they're pissed and they cancel. That's it. Then they're never gonna order it again, right? So we gotta catch them early. So I do this, so I, I record a message in case you guys don't know this trick. So you're gonna send somebody a voice memo. You see that button I, I circled on the picture? It's a little like up button. You can click that and it says forward. I'm going to forward that voice memo to all of my new challengers and nobody knows that I send it to more than one person. Okay. It's literally going to create a new message and send it to Sally and a new message and send it to Becky and a new message. And they're all going to get, Hey girl, I wanted to check in and see if you start drinking your Shaco every day. How are you liking it? How are you mixing it? And that took me 30 seconds. Okay. So there's your tip number one. Then week two, I'll send out another message. Hey girl, happy Monday. Don't forget to start your week strong with Shakeology. Are you noticing less cravings and more energy? How's your digestion? I did two things here. 
Number one, I'm implanting in their brain in case they haven't noticed yet that Shakeology is helping with their cravings and, you know, they should get it in every day and they have more energy. Because immediately when you say something, somebody sees it. It's like when you start driving a car and then you see that same car everywhere, right? It's because it's been brought to your attention. So we bring it to their attention that they have less cravings, more energy. And also I'm asking how their digestion is because how many of you have had people be like, I can't tolerate Shakeology. Like I've had diarrhea every day and nobody told you that. Right. And you could have told them something. You could have been like, Oh, are you lactose intolerant? Maybe you should try vegan. Um, you know, and you can give them some tips on that. So I always ask them that question. And usually in the first two weeks of me doing that, I've sorted out any major issues and avoided people not drinking their Shakeology. So bag two doesn't hit them by surprise. Okay. So 90 days to a lifer, challenger, Shakeology customer, or a rock star coach. I have three phases through my 90 day process that I put people through in a nutshell. <clears throat> Phase one is the first 30 days, accountability and results. That's what I was talking about. Like the darn participant tracker every single day, like riding those people, like, where are you? Where's your food log? What are you eating? No, it's only week one. Don't eat the Hershey bar. You know, like you are riding them because accountability is the most important in those first days. Okay. So their accountability, their results, that's phase one. That's it. 30 days. Phase two, I help them lead by example. So I help them see the importance that new baby challengers are going to come in on day one and you're on day 31. So I need you to be the first that posts your food log every night. I need you to be the first one that posts your results on the weekend and lead by example. Like and comment on their posts, support them when they have questions. Phase three is I empower them to lead. So anybody that is a, a coach prospect of mine in the group, I assign them somebody in the group to be like their buddy. I'm like, hey, could you watch out for Sam? She's brand new. And if you could just like and comment on her posts every day, that'd be super helpful. And if you don't see that she's showing up, will you message me? Number one, I'm tracking Sam every day anyways, so I know. But guess what I'm going to know? I'm going to know if that person's actually like doing anything, like if they want to be a coach, because I know that Sam didn't show up these two days. And if they message me, I'm like, oh, awesome. They're actually doing what I asked them to do, which is super cool. And I'm empowering them to be able to do it themselves. So this is one more tip for you within that process. So I do calls with my challengers and my challenge groups. And this is how they go. There's four calls within 90 days. The first one is before our group even starts, that seven days of prep week, I do a kickoff Zoom call with all my new challengers. I get them excited. I build belief that they can do this. I reset those expectations and let them know what they can expect of week one. Kind of like what a teacher would do with, you know, letting you know what the objectives are for the week. I'm letting you know what the objectives are and then we're going to accomplish them this week. After 30 days, we get on another group Zoom together. Each person on the call shares their story. They share their results. They share their progress. This is good practice for coaching. They're starting to tell their story. They're recognizing their results. People are applauding and accepting their results, and it's awesome. Then at that point, I talk to them like I just told you guys about, hey, can you lead by example in this next round? Be the first to post. Support the newbies, okay? And then at 60 days, I do a one-on-one -on -one call with all the people who hit that 60-day mark. And for me, this is invaluable. I do 20-minute power chats, what I like to call them. I use a, a service called Calendly that's free. They can schedule the call themselves. I insert my Zoom link in there, um, and that's it. And I ask them a couple questions that you can do on Calendly. So on that call, I ask them to pick a struggle that they've been struggling with, and we work through it together. At this point in time, I also um, recommend personal development to them if they haven't already started doing it. I give them a book they should start reading. And, um, you know, I ask them about coaching at this point in time, and I just plant that seed if they haven't um, accepted my offer yet. And then at the 90-day mark, I do a, a Zoom again with the whole group. The, the kind of the class that came in together is graduating together. And we do a call celebrating their results together. And I ask all of those people if within the group, they would make a post with their day one and their day 90 pictures, sharing their results and telling their story in the format that I'd have somebody do a coming out post of, you know, hey, what was life like before I started this program? What did I find with it? What can I offer other people? And they invite to my group, okay? So they can either invite to my group to join me or they can invite to my group to join them 
as a coach and I help them do that. So they're getting practice in our group and then I, I help them tweak that at all if they need to and then I challenge them to post it on their page. So that in a nutshell is, you know, group graduation. They either have enrolled as a coach at this point in time or if they don't want to coach, they continue in an ongoing accountability group that I have on the challenge tracker that doesn't close out. It's open through the end of the year and they log their food and they keep going in there. So that is what I have for you guys. Um, I can definitely stay on a couple of minutes and answer any questions that you have, but let me stop sharing so I can see your pretty faces. Does anybody have any questions? I have one. So, um, it's Christy. <laughs> hey, Christy. Christy's on market council with me in Pittsburgh. So I recognize her, her face. <laughs> so you said that you're adding people every 30 days. How do you keep track of who's going to be on those 60 day and 90 day calls if you're constantly adding new people to the mm -hmm. same? So for me, um, one thing that I do is I like the way I write them down on my participant tracker is like, how they came into the group together. That just keeps them straight in my head is one way. If you're a digital person, you could color code them if that's your style. Or the other thing that you can do, which is really simple, is just if you click on your challenge group on Facebook or like, I don't know if you use Challenge Tracker or Facebook. For my 90-day groups, I use Facebook personally. Um, it, I like to go live and it helps my people a lot to do that. And then after they've learned those habits and those behaviors for 90 days, I put them into the challenge tracker for my ongoing group. But so in Facebook, if you click on group members, it tells you in order when they enrolled. So I'm like, okay, for example, my group that started in January, anybody who enrolled in January, I was removing in April, you know? So I just kind of would go through and do that with each of them. And in the same place in Facebook from members, you could click start chat and click on those people within there to do it with. So that's kind of how I do it. Okay, that's all I have. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? Hi, I have a couple. Oh, I'm uh, first off, thanks so much for sharing. That was really good. Um, so one thing you said was that during your prep week, you have the meal plan and everything. Um, where are they getting this meal plan? Are you having them following, follow the nutrition guide and 21 day fix, or do you actually write a meal plan based on the portion plan A and then have them go get stuff for that? So technically by law, I'm a nutritionist and I could do that, but I don't want to do that because that's not duplicatable for my coaches. So in case you don't know, none of you, unless you have a degree, even if you do, you should follow my example though and don't do it. Don't write meal plans for people. You don't get, like, they're not paying you enough for that anyways. People pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars for me to write them a meal plan as a nutritionist. They have an awesome nutrition plan within the 21 day fix, all right? So everybody follows the container system. They all might have different goals and they're following a different program. Most of the programs have, you know, like a compilation of now Body Beast has a container guide, all of that stuff. So I tell them, go read the nutrition plan for your thing. And then I go live during my prep week, giving them meal planning tips, basically things like, Hey, here's an example of how you could break down your meals for each category. If you guys haven't found that on Pinterest, somebody made something at one point in time that was like breakfast. If you're in the 2100 calorie block, two purples, and two reds, you know, and I give them an example like that. You can base your meals around something like this if you need a visual, or I'll walk them through and explain to them how I plan my meals personally is I plan all my dinners first, and then my lunches become my leftovers from the day before dinner, and then breakfast fills in the gaps, you know, and I tell them how I do it. Um, so the best thing you can do as a coach is train somebody how to do it on their own. If you want to offer somebody a resource, all of you are allowed to do this. You can post your meal plan and write Christie's meal plan, 2100 calorie bracket example. Don't say follow this meal plan. That's when you can get yourself in trouble as a coach. But you can post yours as an example and you can teach them how to meal plan relative to the nutrition plan that came with their program. Does that make sense? 
It does. Mm-hmm. So when you um um so when you're having them read through that like cuz I'm not going to lie the 21 day uh fixed nutrition plan is really long and so like are you telling them like you should probably be in portion plan A if you're looking to lose weight cuz the average so cuz I'm a certified personal trainer so I'm not a nutritionist but like I have worked with people in the fitness side of things and so I'm just kind of curious as to how like you help them feel comfortable knowing what portion plan and everything they should be in. So like, do you ask them to do the calculation? No, I typically just do it for them. Don't stop. Number one, you're, you're doing too much work for them. Like if people don't have to take the steps, often they don't follow through. And I think sometimes we feel like we have to do that to feel like we're more credible. Like we don't have to do that for people. What I always say to people, like literally one of their assignments is, read the nutrition plan that came with your plan from cover to cover. Cause I don't want a message that says, Hey Abby, what container do oats go in? Read your book. Like what the heck, you know? So that's what I do with people is I tell them to read their book cover to cover, comment below with the plan you're supposed to follow with your calculation that you did for your calories. So I make them do it. They're deciding what they're going to follow. And then from there, you know, we can use common sense to help them to say like, Hey, it seems like you're cheating a little bit too much to be in that bracket. If you're going to keep cheating, why don't you bump down a bracket? So you're eating less normal calories and then you have room for your cheats. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. And then, sorry, I have one more question. Um, are you running free groups to, um, you know, had people to invite or how are you like making new friends and stuff? Yeah. So for me, and I'm happy to share this with Carolyn and she can share it with you guys too. But I follow, since I became a coach, like I said, I had a lot of different plates in my life. I was spinning with all the different activities I was part of and multiple full-time jobs. So I found it really overwhelming to think about inviting to a challenge group every day of the week for all month long And then I'd be like, well, I had somebody sign up for a challenge pack like three days after my challenge group started. And now I have to open another group, you know? And so that would stress me out all the time. So what I started doing was every month is the exact same. Each week of the month has a different focus for me. And that's what I invite to. So I'm always inviting, but I'm inviting to something specific. And that's just how my brain works. So for me, for example, I always like week one is the last week of the month. The last week of the month for me, I'm always running a free group or a mini group. And that's when now I have prospects who are ready to order on the first through the fifth of the month, every single month for my challenge groups. So I always hit success club in the first five days of the month. It's off my plate. It's out of like, you know, my realm of feeling overwhelmed and I keep going. I keep going. I mean, for me, typically I I hit over 20 every month and that's, that's just a personal goal of mine, but I run a free group at the end of the month. I get new challengers the first week of the month, sometimes two weeks of the month, depending on how the month falls. I'm recruiting for a challenge group. And then the third week of the month, I always recruit for the coach opportunity. And then the fourth week of the month, I'm back at free groups again. So that's how my flow is every single month. And um, that's helped me stay on track and be able to have new people to talk to all the time. Okay. Last question, I swear. So you also um, have a fitness studio. And so how do you balance like, um, you know, like having people, you know, do fitness classes with you or writing meal plans and then doing Beachbody or is, do you have some kind of order to that as well? So it is um, a money pit. So if anybody here is ever considering opening a gym or, you know, wanting to personal train more than like one or two clients just because you love it, um, don't, all right? Because I have been, I have had my own gym for five years. I've been teaching fitness classes for 10 years and there's no money in it. I still haven't made any money in five years of owning my own gym. And it cost me thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to open. I paid $180 for a T25 challenge pack when I signed up. And now I make more money than I made as a dental hygienist working full time. To me, that's a much better investment of my time and my energy and my focus. So now I've got to a point where, you know, 
if I have a client that really tugs at my heartstrings, I will write meal plans one-on-one for them. But what I was finding, even as a nutritionist, is that the 21 day fix meal plan is very easy and simple and straightforward. And I knew I could get people better results giving them the 21 day fix plan than giving them macros that they had to count and calculate or calories that they had to track. And I ended up giving people the portion fix anyways in a one-on-one session. So it made more sense to start putting people in challenge groups hooking them up with Shakeology and getting them started that way. So for me, my gym is not my primary source of income or like it's not even where I get most of my clients. Some of my clients are on Shakeology, but most of them are like they're group fitness people. They want to do group fitness. And then I have a whole nother online side of my business that's usually people I didn't even know. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? I have a really quick one. Um, so for the full 90 days, and I probably can't find you on here. Oh, <laughs> I see you now. I'm like, where are you? <laughs> so do you have a template of posts for the full 90 days? Like, are you posting, like, do you run, like, themed groups? or I'm are you so really- glad you asked that. I'll just cut you off right now. So okay. whenever I decided to run 90-day groups and to cut the fluff and start tracking people, I stopped creating daily posts and templates and all of that. You know what's more important than anything? You post in your workout in there every day, you post in your Shakeology, and you post in your food blog at the end of the day, letting people know what you ate, just like you're asking them to do. The group becomes self-run. Now, I can spend my time interacting on people's posts, and they can spend their time interacting on each other's posts versus interacting with the daily post that I created that's you know kind of taking their focus off where it needs to be anyways. So for me, that's what I do. Occasionally, like it's not, it's not ever planned, but sometimes I'll throw out a post that like, I'll put a poll up in the group and say, how many days out of seven did you get Shakeology in this week? You know, that'll be like an interactive post or I'll be like, throw up your favorite recipe of Shakeology today. It'll be random, but it's never like following any kind of template. And I don't do it every day because also we have to remember from a coaching standpoint, our job is not to like look glamorous and look like we have it all together and be like these amazing fitness and nutrition professionals. Our job is to be the ultimate accountability partner for somebody and for the challengers in your group to be able to say, I can do that too. The only difference between her and me is that she's checking people off on her piece of paper, but I'm doing the same thing. I'm supporting the people in the group. I'm posting my food blog every day and I want my people in my group to know they can do everything that I'm doing right now. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Any last questions? I had a question about the prep week because I was actually putting together something similar. Yeah. I was trying to decide whether I wanted to do that on Facebook or if I wanted to do like um, one of those think if it kind of things where they have to go through it on their own and I'll see when they complete each thing. And until they do, I'm not going to add them to the Facebook group. Um, but what based on experience, like, what do you think, like, do you go live every single day for that whole week and do a live video in the thing? So like, brand new every time, like it's a brand, it's the same group and you just clean it out. And like, how does that So for me, that's a great question. So I used to like run the prep week within the actual 90 day group. Now I just have one standing 90 day group that is just like the meat of what we do every day. You know, we check in with our daily posts. And for me, part of my contract is every day they check in with their food blog on the weekends. Everybody posts progress pictures, measurements, and weight. It's the only time they're allowed to weigh themselves once a week on the weekends. So that's where all that happens. And I have one other group that's a seven day group and I run the same group every time I just delete people out of it. That that way I have all my files in there already with the contract Mm -hmm. and everything. And in that group, that's where I run the prep week. So until people have submitted their before pictures and their meal plans and all their stuff, they don't get added to the 90 day group. Mm -hmm. They're just there waiting. Um, So that's what I do in my prep week. That's the only template that I do and that I offer my coaches to is that my seven day prep looks the same every single time. And that's also why I run it in a separate group because nobody's going to see it twice. Once those people see it, they're moving into the 90 day group. And then my new group of people will see that prep. So for me, Monday is goal setting. And, um, you know, that's usually I will go live that first day 
make sure people know my story a little bit and talk about the importance of setting goals that are measurable. Then I have them comment with their goals. I have them set short-term goals, 30-day, 60-day, and 90-day goals to match our group. Tuesday, their assignment is um, to look through the nutrition plan, and I talk about the containers, and that's just a written post. It's a written post that's about the container system for them to read through their meal plan and to comment below with the bracket they fall into. Wednesday is workout Wednesday. I ask them to choose a program, comment below with what program that they're going to follow from their all access on demand, when they're going to do their workout, and where they're going to do it. Then on Thursday, I go live again. Thursday's meal planning 101, and I give them my experience with what works best for me in meal planning live. And I ask them to start working on their meal plans and just post for the next four days any questions they have about meal planning as they're going through it. Plan one day, three days, five days, whatever you get done, post. And then Friday, I talk about what it takes to get results, and I kind of put it all together. That's also a live video, and I talk about fitness, nutrition, Shakeology, accountability, the whole package that we offer within a challenge pack and why that's essential for the results. Then Saturday, I post that success checklist that I post that I shared with you guys in the beginning mm -hmm. that was have them do their before and after, I mean, their before pictures, all their stats, and then they'll graduate to our group. Okay. So what if you have people who like buy a challenge pack, like kind of off, like do you put them all in the same exact day or do you just, if the group didn't start yet, you'll throw them in the prep week and they can, like, how do you do that? Because I always end up having people ordering, like, oh, I can order on this day and then, like, the prep week already started, but you don't want them to wait a whole nother, like, 60 days. Like, what do you do with someone like that? So I personally only, like, recruit, invite people for my challenge group during a certain, a certain two weeks that I do that. If somebody says during those two weeks that they're like, hey, prep week is supposed to start on the 8th. They're like, hey, Abby, I can't order till the 10th. Can I be part of your group still? I'm like, sure thing. I'm going to add you to prep week. But if you don't order on the 10th, I need you to know right now that I'm going to remove you. No hard feelings, right? <laughs> and they're like, okay, yeah, cool. So then I've set it up in advance. Like, hey, if you don't order, I'm going to remove you from this group. And so I'll let them do that. Same thing has happened before with even somebody saying, I definitely want to do this, but I can't order till, and maybe it's a week into our group. If I know that in advance, I'll still let them be in the group, and then I'll remove them if they don't order on the day they said they're going to order. So you'll so. let them go through prep week even though they don't really have anything to yep. prep technically? Well, so yeah. what I'll do, you know, like during that, like for my container description, I talk about the containers, what they are, and I actually say in it like a green container is equivalent to about a cup of vegetables. Mm -hmm. A purple container is equivalent to about a cup of fruit. And, you know, like I'll talk in generalities – and I'll still have them, like, pick a workout program. We'll, we'll usually have to have a few back and forth, like, voice memos of, like, what type of workout they'd like to do. So I kind of help them decide some of that stuff if they're going to be a late purchaser. Gotcha. So do you think the same type of thing would work in that other format that I had said? You know what that is, right? Yeah. Um, Until they actually finish it, like, they can't get added. So is that – you think that would kind of work? Because I don't want to go do it if you don't think it would have the same kind of – I mean, I think it would work. What I think you'll miss is that personal connection with people. And for me, there's just something about like that group of people starting together. Like they're all starting together at the same time. You know, like all 10 of them or 15 of them are starting prep week. They're already getting to know each other each day of that and sharing in the preparations and sharing their fears. And that's invaluable to me personally. And just the ability to go live in real time and be like, Hey, I saw you guys, you know, your goals and I'm so excited about them, you know, and like kind of talk to them that way. I think it's more effective mm -hmm. to do it all together in a group. Yeah. So good thing I didn't finish that project. Yet. <laughs> um, yeah. Cause I was thinking of the same thing. I want to do some kind of prep week and I didn't know the best format of doing that, whether it was Facebook or some other kind of thing, but um, I like what, I like what you're doing and obviously it's working. So definitely something uh to implement awesome yeah i was yeah. wondering if you would be willing to share your contract with us too so that yeah. if we wanted to make a similar one we could just make it so sure. whatever we wanted it to say um i think that was that was all the questions they had um yeah yeah i think that was it
Awesome, guys. Well, thanks for listening to me tonight. I hope you got a few nuggets that will be helpful in your business. Um, you know, I'm a big doer, so I can't leave without asking you to write down something right now, one thing. Pick one thing that you're going to implement in your challenge groups. We can't all change everything overnight, and maybe your challenge group is going on right now. But what's one thing that you can change in your challenge groups? And jot it down, or if you already know and you want to type it in chat, feel free to share it. But one thing that you can change that's going to make your business better and give your challengers better results. And, um, you know, that's all I can ask is that you just do something and take this information and act on it. All right. Well, thank you for sharing all of that valuable information with us. I know that everyone got um, lots of takeaways from that. So thank you for taking your time to come talk to us. And I'm sure we will see each other at Summit. For sure. All right, All right guys. Bye. Have an awesome night. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye.